<laughs> What's going on guys? Uh, Manchester United 4, Leeds nil, And yeah, like, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that, to be honest. Like, Leeds are not a shit team. Yeah, they're a championship team, but they almost got promoted, innit? Like, I had loads of Leeds, fa Leeds fans messaging me on Instagram when they were in the playoffs and that, chatting bare shit, saying, ah, oh, we're not going to be welcome at Ellen Road. And what's going to happen to us United fans when we come? Well, guess what, bruv? Enjoy your championship football. Fucking dead food. But yeah, man, it, it was good. Like, we slapped them up, to be completely honest. Um, I saw some stuff online before. People weren't quite sure, like, tactically what we were going to do. And I think that Oli, it looks like Oli's trying to play this double pivot with Pogba in the double pivot. He does that job for France. I think he could do that for us. Um, <clears throat> and if we're going to play that formation, the 4 2 3 1, then I think that it's evident that we definitely need a better number 10 than one matter. I thought he was shit today, man. I thought he was nowhere. Like, this is his um, favoured position. He started with the armband. And I thought he was poor. Like, that just leaves me even more disillusioned as to why we kept him on. I know people are going to talk about. Um, presence in the dressing room and all them things but we've got such a young team anyway players like him are not missed bruv like they're not one Matt, one Matt is not an Ashley Young in the sense that he's not vocal he doesn't put himself about on the pitch he doesn't lead by example he's just an experienced player but even though he's experienced he's not a big personality you can see that that like the guy writes journals and that bruv like that's what he does do you know what I'm saying like I've never seen him screaming on the pitch pointing and telling people where to be or taking matters into his own hands. That's just not what he is like. He is a player that was very good. But now, his legs are gone, brother. And he's past his best, man. Like, So, it was it's poor, really. Like, I'm seeing him against a championship side. And he didn't look he didn't look comfortable. So, I don't know. The press was good. But the shape, if we're going to play this shape all season, I don't mind. We definitely need a better number 10. Um... I can see why he wanted long stuff now. I think McTominay played very, very well. But McTominay's not a defensive player. If you look at McTominay, he looks most comfortable picking up the ball and breaking forward and playing little passes. I think, like, even if you look at McTominay's... Is it his Twitter or his Instagram? It's like McTominay 10 or something. Like, I think he sees himself more as a... Well, as an attacking player. And he's, he's tidy on the ball, bruv. Like, and he's got a good eye for a pass, but he doesn't have the passing range of a long staff in it and I think if you're going to play the double pivot um with someone like Pogba who likes to gallop forward like the deep lying player ideally needs to be someone who can pass the ball so I can see where they're thinking with the long staff link obviously 50 million is a fuckery I think that's newspaper talk and I think we can still get him for like 2025 20, if we get him for that I think it's a good sign and if we don't get him it's not the end of the world we still got McTominay, Matic and Fred to play next to Pogba because if Pogba's fit, obviously he starts. Um, I thought Pogba was well. Pogba was my man in the match today. Um, they gave it to Marcus Rashford. Um, I don't know how. Like he scored a very good goal, but other than that, I thought Pogba ran the game. Um, his passing was immense. His holding of the ball, like his weight of pass, everything was just brilliant today, man. And. It's funny because I tweeted, I'm bored of telling people how good this guy is. I'm bored, in it? Because we still haven't seen the best of him because we've been shit. And even so, the levels have been high. Not consistently, but how can you be play at a consistent high level when you don't have players around you playing at a consistent high level? It's very difficult. Um, the weight of pass that he played through to Wamba Saka yeah, for Mason Greenwood's goal, he's the only player on the pitch... I'm one of the only midfielders in world football, yeah, that can play a weight or pass like that, bro. That the disguise on it, the weight, do you know what I mean? The weight was kind of like one of them grass cutters. He kind of skimmed it and it kind of bounced through. Like, he literally took, he not even took, bro. He put the perfect amount of weight on it to the point where one Basaka didn't have to break his stride and he can just go straight onto the ball. And those are the best kind of passes when the player attacking the ball doesn't even have to break stride. They can just run straight onto it. So, like, that pass, like, is underrated. It's an underrated pass. Like, everyone was obviously over the moon for Mason. Me too, like, I'm a massive fan. But that pass made the goal. 
if there was anyone else on the ball, we probably don't score that goal. Wan Basaka, he got his assist today, but he was amazing today. Um, that's I've, that's the first time I remember for a long time that we scored a goal from the right hand side. Like literally today, most of our shit was coming down the right, and that never happens. Normally we're very very left side dominant. So that one signing alone has changed the whole dynamic of the way we play football. So I can see why Oli really wanted it, and. Obviously, there were doubts, and we were thinking. I even said if Ashley Young um, starts the season at right back here, yeah, I'm not going to no games, bro. Like I said that same way when Mourinho, I said if that pussy old don't get sacked, I'm not going back, bro, because it was doing my nut. And you, we need to see how serious the club are and that. Um, I'm going to be at every game next season. <laughs> One Bissaka's there, so home and away. Apart from the two holidays I got booked at the end of August and the start of September, I think I'm going Barcelona. With the man, um, I think, first week of September and last week of August, I'm away as well. So, I will prob- I don't know. I think there's an international break in there somewhere. So, I think I only miss one game, even though I'm away twice. But other than that, I'm looking to be at every single game next season. Um, wan Saka has shown his quality already. People were talking about him going forward and his stats going forward. And I said to people, you have to understand he's playing in a team that predominantly defends when he plays for Crystal Palace. So he's not going to get forward that much. As soon as he's in a red shirt, all of a sudden you're seeing the overlaps. You're seeing the way he intercepts. Like, you're seeing the slide tackles. You're seeing everything. This guy excites me. He's the best right back that I've seen at our club. Like, he is. Literally. Like, he's got everything. Like, physically... He's on par with Paul Pogba in terms of athleticism. He's quick, he's leggy, he's strong, great core strength, great balance and that. And when you've got an athlete like that, that can actually play football, like him and Pogba linked up as well. Pogba was drifting over to the right, more so than the left. And a lot of the time, Pogba pops up, pops up on that inside left pocket. Today, he, he did a lot of stuff on the right-hand side. The free ball that he played came on the right. And a lot of stuff that he did nicely today came on the right. I don't know if Oli specifically told him to play on the right-hand side of the two or he just prefers to link up with wan I'm not sure. I'm not really sure as yet, but we'll see as the season goes on. Um, who else have we got? Um, Marcus Rashford looked sharp today. His link-up play... Um, was touch and go a few times he tried to do little fancy flicks around the corner like he doesn't have that in his locker what Marcus does do well is like he does drop short he tries to give, do the little give and go and run into space and I think he played well today to be completely honest like um, there was one donor on Twitter I had to block him bro because you know when people are just trying to draw you out going back to last season yeah and literally like commenting on every single tweet that man put out say when I was saying right like Rashford's not ready man don't rate Rashford and going on and on and I'm like bro like this is football innit because man's had a good 45 minutes that doesn't mean that he's a world beater football fans are too reactionary like a man will score a goal and all of a sudden like remember when Lukaku had a little purple patch um last season where he scored against Crystal Palace he scored against PSG I think he scored two, three braces in a row or something. And everyone was like, oh, you were chatting shit about Lukaku. Lukaku's still shit, bruv. Marcus Rashford is not shit. But Marcus Rashford is overrated. His best scoring season is 10 goals, bruv. So you can't be gassing up a man where 10 goals is his best scoring season, yeah? Like, and midfielders are scoring more than him. Like, it's still early days for Marcus. Marcus has a lot of potential... In terms of his physical attributes, he's quick. Do you know what I mean? He's fit, he's buzzing all over the place. He's skillful at times. Sometimes he looks clumsy. But generally, technically, he's quite sound, isn't it? It's his football brain and his IQ that lacks. I've always said, if Marcus Rashford isn't given time, he looks brilliant. And again, we saw today, look at the goal that he scored. Got the ball, fucking sent my man for a chip butty and slotted it home. But the reason why Rashford... Scores goals like that. The goal he scored against Liverpool when he spun Trent, Trent Alexander like a Beyblade. All them kind of goals is when he has to react. Pure instinct. Get the ball. Get it out your feet. Get the shot off. 
that's where Rashford um, excels. When Rashford has time to put his foot on the ball and get his head up and look around, bruv, if he has too many options, nine times out of ten, he'll pick the wrong one because his football IQ is, is borderline non-existent. And that's just what happens. So, we have to know, like, our players' strengths and our weaknesses. Rashford, all day, in one-on-one -on -one situations, like, instinctive, I like him there. Do you know what I mean? In situations where you have to get your head up, pick a pass and that, I'd rather have Martial there. Do you know what I mean? All of our players have different strengths. You look at Daniel James today, rapid, willing runner. He presses well. Like, reminds me of Tevez a bit, the way he hustles, hustles, hustles. But again, his end product ain't quite there at the moment, but that will come. But he offers something different to both of them because he's a lot more direct and he is fucking gone, bruv. Like, he can literally tread water, bruv. He's a rapid. He literally a Ferrari out there. So, that's another player that can play from wide that offers another option. And all three of them are fucking rapid. Like, this is an amazing, amazing problem to have. If we're going to play this pacey back-to-front football, I can see why Oli wants a quarterback player that can play long balls from deep and play things into the channel like a long staff, like what a Michael Carrick or a Scholes towards the end of his career would have done. Do you know what I mean? Someone like Nevers would have been perfect for that. But um, it's clear that Oli wants someone that can transition well. Harry Maguire will help with that as well because you'll step out from the back and he can play passes. And then we just need to be direct and pacey, bruv. Mason Green with another one from the right. Pace to burn. Great technical ability and the guy can finish. His goal today showed you he's a striker. You see when I said that for me, Marcus ain't a proper striker, this is what I meant, bruv. Like, Marcus Rashford very rarely gets these dart to the near post, tapping number nine finishes like the Michael Owens used to get. Do you know what I mean? Like the Andy Coles and them, and those are proper poachers' goals and that. The, the movement of Mason Greenwood for 17 years old is is bordering on elite, bruv, when you look at his movement. Like, he took that with his stronger foot, but obviously he's left-footed, but he's let the ball come across him and he's taken it with his left foot. That shows you the timing and everything was beautiful. And that was pure instinct. And he was playing on the right wing and he managed to drift inside and make the near post dart and finish it. You know what I mean? And that tells you his natural instinct is to come inside and to make those runs. And credit to Rashford. When Mason did pull inside a lot of the time, Rashford went out wide. Because I still believe that Rashford feels more comfortable in wide positions where he's got more space and more time on the ball. And you see that he does gravitate a lot towards either flank. Naturally. Because that's where the grass is. He likes to run at players. So, I don't know. First half. I thought first half was very, very good. Um, those are the players I wanted to cover for the first half. Second half. For me. Chong and Gomez stuck out um, the most. I think people were saying about Tahith Chong's physique and that saying, oh, if he was bigger and that. Me personally, I think Tahith Chong physically is fine. Like, not everything's about phys physicality, man. Like, Tahith Chong is no smaller than Marcus Rashford was when he broke into the team. And Tahith Chong is so technically sound and he's got enough pace. He's not rapid, but he's got enough pace to get away from a man that he don't have to be built like a brick shithouse, bruv. He doesn't. Like, even when, um, like, Oli said that Mason needs to work on his physicality and that. For me, Mason Greenwood has got a very good physique. Out of the three of them, he's the closest to being ready to play in men's football physically. I don't think there's nothing wrong with his physique, bruv. I just think that when you look at players like Gabriel Jesus and these men, these are small guys. You know what I mean? And they're still bagging goals, like. So, I think that too much is made over these guys' physicalities. Like, when you look at an Angel Gomez, there's no, not much difference between the build of an Angel, Go Angel Gomez and a David Silva, bruv. Like, there's not. Do you know what I mean? These guys are not massive players. I think because of their age, their size is taken into account. Angel Gomez is probably bigger than one fucking matter, bruv. One matter ain't got, ain't got no physicality in his game, bruv, and he's five foot nothing. So when man are looking at Angel and saying, right, maybe he needs to grow into his body, I think that's a bit of ageism there. To be completely honest, because um, one matters fucking, what, 30, 31 years old, and he's built like a fucking 14 year old. So I don't think that um, physicality's got anything to do with these two's game. Like, um, Chung won the penalty that Ma um, Martial put away, and um, the ball from Gomez was um, brilliant. And Gomez showed again why we didn't need to keep one matter. 
Because in that number 10 position, yeah, like, I'm optimistic we'll get Bruno, yeah, but even if we don't get Bruno Fernandes, yeah, Gomez is a better option in there. Pereira's a better option in there than Mata. And even Jesse Lingard's a better option in there, even though Lingard was shit, blood. I told man, yeah, Lingard, like, killed more man than John Wick today, fam. Like, complete disaster class. But even so, his mobility, his one-touch play, yeah, and... His third man runs and the fact that he likes to run past players. Lingard's more dangerous in that position than one matter. He plays that role for England and he looks a different player. One matter does play your little eye of the needle f um, slide wall passes. But not very often did you see one matter get past, get past the defenders. He was happy to play in front of them. Do you know what I mean? His legs have gone now, guys. So um, for the life of me, I cannot fucking fathom why we kept him. I really can't. So Chong and Gomez... I was very happy with um, Jimmy Garner got a few minutes. Um, Matic came came on second half and was taken off. Uh, I'm very happy to see that Oli knows that he's not the guy. And Oli will be looking to move him on. Um, potentially, I think next season will be Matic's last season at the club. Which I do like because the pace of play, I think we've all agreed that the pace of play at the club has not been good. And I think that he knows that Matic is a big reason for that. So he's looking to bring in people that move the ball quickly, which is exactly what we need. So overall, it's only, yeah, Philip Jones, blood, the slabbed, scored a Harry Maguire-esque header from a set piece, which was from an Andreas Pereira corner also. Um, it was good to see Phil Jones and um, Chris Smalling together as a second team, because that's very encouraging, because I'm not trying to see their man in the first team playing together and once Harry Maguire comes in if that means that Jones and Small in a fourth and fifth choice centre half then I'm fucking over the moon mate because Eric Bailly looked decent with Lindelof today um, and once Harry comes in you can only assume that it'd be Harry and Victor and Harry and Victor two ball playing centre halves two physically strong centre halves two um, centre halves with decent speed they're not quick but they're not slow, in it. They're decent athletes, but do you know what I mean? So them two together, ball playing, with Wan Bissaka on the right hand side, Luke Shaw on the left, um, Paul Pogba in the double pivot with a long staff for McTominay, Bruno in front of that. Do you know what I mean? And then you're looking at Martial, Rashford, and someone else. Blood. I would love if it was Mason. I don't think we'll start the season with Mason there. I hope that we don't start with Mata there, but I don't put it past Oli, to be honest. And I'm not trying to see Lingard on the right wing, really. But a front three of Martial, Rashford and fucking um, and Greenwood would be immense. So overall, guys, um, I'm super happy with the performance, to be honest. Like, it's pre-season. You can't read too much into it. In pre-season, we do well traditionally anyway, man. Like, I don't remember us... Like, I remember pre-seasons where we've beat Barcelona and them things there. Like, it doesn't really mean anything. But because it was Leeds, because there was a bit of spice in it, Bielsa had man-marking man players and stuff. Like, they didn't take this game lightly. And we slapped them off the park. Two goals in both halves. We saw the same shape played in both halves. I think the players in the first half suited the, the shape more than the players in the second half. I think second half was more of a makeshift team. Players were playing out of position. But... Um, I saw a lot of promise, just the attitude, the style of play and the ethos, yeah, like, I can kind of see what Oli's trying to do now, I can see it, like, I couldn't see before, but if we are going to persist with this formation, I want us to just keep this formation all the time, and I want players to get used to playing in certain places, if it means Matt is only going to play centrally, then that's brilliant, like, as far as I'm concerned, if he's not playing in the 10, he shouldn't be playing at all, We've now got enough pace and enough youth with Greenwood, Rashford, Martial, James on the flanks that I don't want to see fucking matter there. You know what I mean? You can add Jesse in there as a fifth if you have to, but I'd rather not. Do you know what I mean? So, overall, slightly... Uh, ah, I don't want to say I'm optimistic, but I'm relaxed because I know Harry's coming in and Harry Maguire automatically improves that defence further. Like, Wan-Bissaka has changed the whole dynamic of the team, giving us a balance on the right-hand side. And I feel like if you bring in Harry Maguire as well, that adds an extra bit of steel. And then our attackers can kind of attack more freely. Pogba can run forward more freely because he knows that we've got a solid base 
and someone sitting behind him as well. So in the games against the smaller teams, especially at home, we can play just the one holding midfielder and really go for it, man, and really um, threaten teams. And with the creati creativity of Pogba, plus one, hopefully a Fernandez, then these wide players are going to be getting loads of service and their movement's good. There's a lot of pace. I think, without getting too ahead of myself, I think there is reason for optimism. Right now, as the squad stands, with no one coming in, I still think we're not good enough for top four. Um, but if we do get in, for for instance, um, Harry Maguire, Bruno Fernandes and Longstaff, then I think that, I think that it's a real possibility finishing in the top four. I said last season that finishing fourth, I'd be happy with because it's progression. Like, we're not Man City. We're not going to buy six, seven man in a window. So if it means that this season we just finish fourth to get into the Champions League, the next season we go after the likes of the Sanchos and these men when we have Champions League football and we rebuild over a two-season thing and then in the third season we go for it, then we just have to be patient, guys, um, and just accept that what we are now is a team playing for top four this season. So um, let me know what you think in the comment section on the points I've touched on. Um, what points should I say? I'd say one matter. Good idea, bad idea to keep him. I think that's an important point. Um, the, the development of Greenwood, what do you think his ceiling is? I honestly think that he can be one of the best Manchester United Academy products that we've seen in my lifetime anyway. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to say ever because you got the likes of Paul Scholes and them, man, bruv. Like, and that's just... If Mason got anywhere near that level, do you know what I mean? It, it's a madness, bro. But in terms of my lifetime coming through the academy, I think, yeah, Wan-Bissaka... How do you like him? The dynamic. Obviously, we had Gary Neville. Gary Neville's an absolute legend, bruv. But physically, Gary wasn't that kind of player. Do you know what I mean? So, in my opinion, like, obviously, it's too early to say because Wamba Saka um, still hasn't played for us this season and he's young. But I think his ceiling is higher. His ceiling is higher than Gary Neville's. So, I'm excited. He could go down as one of the best right backs that's ever played for our club. Um, obviously, Gary. Has to be that guy right now, bruv. Um, yeah. And also about Chong and Gomez, the physicality um, factor. What do you guys think? A lot of people are saying physically these men are not ready. But for me, I think that's a load of tosh, man. I think that you can find grown men that are physically smaller than these guys. And um, I think that these guys are ready. As long as their mentality is right, I don't think the size of the player makes a difference bruv do you know what I mean they say it's not the size of the dog in the fight but the size of the fight and the dog in it and I think that these men have shown that they've got the right mentality to kind of come in and do what they need to do so let me know about those four topics um make sure you smash the like button make sure you sub and also if you haven't seen already United stand 500,000 bruv 500k We've got a 500k party in Shoreditch on the 8th of August, guys. Tickets are available. I'm going to put the swipe up in my Instagram, which is at Ransom Bants on Instagram and on Twitter. And also, I'm going to put the swipe up on the United Stand Instagram as well. Um, I think the capacity is only 250 and we sold like 175. Well, not sold because they're free tickets, but we've, we've um, got rid of 175 tickets already. So... There's 75 tickets left. There's not many. So I'm going to put those out there. Big up everyone that supported us. Also, next season, I'm going to be at all the games that I'm available for. Um, also, me and Mark Goldbridge have a new show coming to the United Stand, as well as the Flex and Man show coming back. So there's a lot of shit to look forward to. United Stand FC as well is building and growing. Like I'm going to be taking a bigger role in that as well. So in more of a like a coaching capacity, I've got a meeting tomorrow um, about my next fight, which is going to be at the end of September, possibly against Heavy D. So and then I'm meant to be fighting again, defending the belt I won on the 14th of December. So I'm still going to be fighting. I'm still going to be playing for the United Stand, but I might not always be starting. It really depends on if I'm in camp and if I'm in boxing camp, I'll still be on the sidelines with Mark, almost like an assistant coach, man. So. Listen, we got loads of good shit coming for you guys. We appreciate all your support. And yeah, um, 
I'll be back here for Rance Red Talk and then our next game against Inter. And by the way, we better not play Lukaku against Inter because if they see man in real life, they might pull out the deal, you get me? So big up everyone that's tuned in. Ha, ha, ha.